evening all, and we're kicking off with a really tedious Trevento Malbec, which I knew was bad because when you tedious. when you opened it, I could smell it, and I thought, ah, that's not going to be a good Malbec. I'm sure we just the one we had before, and it was really nice, but I guess not. The only wine anyone needs is barefoot Shiraz. I can. Why is there a Batman handheld down there? I say handheld. Oh, I put a pic. I put a video up the other day of like the LTV handhelds, and that's what was that? that's the remnants of it. I mean, it? oh shit, yeah. I can grab it if you want. Yeah, look, it's really we cool. We can pretend we're driving It's actually somewhere. quite a good one, because I played it a couple of months ago, mm. but it's... Oh, oh, one, uh, one solitary whoa. battery. Take yeah, that out. Two Take that out. A batteries, right? Yeah. And then the other ones are... D. D batteries. Two A AA batteries and two D batteries. Look at that. Parents must have been skint in the 90s when it came to batteries for kids. Well, I always remember my parents... Um, uh, but my mum had a bag, bag of batteries. Oh, is that like, well, like a bag? Yeah, full of batteries. Yeah, everything I, took batteries. I always thought, like, I wonder where they came from. Like, did Santa actually bring the batteries <laughs> yeah. as well? Santa's like, I got two sacks, one full of AAAs. A's. What I found yeah, was... Yeah, well, she, she had a lot of back then. She had a lot of the... Um, is it the... What are the square ones? The oh, just 9-volt battery batteries. Yeah, the 9-volt ones. She had a lot of those because there was a lot of toys that had those. Yeah, and our remote control cars used to have them in the, the control boxes. And the big C ones as well. But what I remember is, as mobile phones got more and more modern, and as toys got more and more modern, they just chewed up batteries more and more. Yeah. And I remember going to Hyper Value. That's right, Welsh. Hyper Value for rocket batteries. Say it properly. Hyper Value. I... No. Well, I don't know what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Never mind. Um, but it's the ad food, isn't it? I feel value, value. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And um, the rocket batteries, you'd put them in your remote control and you'd like, you know, turn the TV on and the batteries would be dead. <laughs> and you'd never turn it off. You'll, you might see that I'm, I'm doing a lot of this. I don't know if you see it at the camera. What we're talking about today is we... Quite often, I'd say once every three months, go to a place in Bridgewater near Taunton in Somerset, um, which is about, it's probably like an hour's drive away from us, but 90 minutes on yeah, the train. Yeah, a bit more than 90 minutes. Is, no, that's right, actually. Thanks. Uh, 95. Um, and well, 96 and a half, I thought. <laughs> um, and there's an arcade there called... Time Warp Arcade. Time Warp Arcade, nothing but love for those, which we'll talk about in a minute. And there's also a... Uh, a store there called Insane Games, which is possibly the best, the best video game store in Britain. It's amazing. A lovely guys, lovely prices. They, <laughs> lovely prices. You no, know, but the like things you think sometimes like why well, do I pay a bit more for that? And yeah, quite often you go in there. I've never, game. I've never picked anything up and thought it's a bit overpriced. And what they do is, I spoke to the owner. Um, they go, so say someone trades in a load of like Mega Drive games. Oh, we're sponsored today, by the way, by Kid Chameleon. Because I've been I wish we were sponsored by Kid Chameleon. <sighs> I've been fancying playing We're not recently. really. You just wanted to put a little it's Mega Drive of the day. Game. Up, didn't you? I, when I was playing Mario Odyssey, and. Oh, oh. Put your hat on there. I can't because of my hair. You can put it on if you want. But, but when I was playing Mario Odyssey recently, it dawned on me that apart from a hat in time, which is also I very sick. It's a taxi driver. Is it? <laughs> is it? Um, <laughs> is, do it? I, do I, is it? Um, when I was playing Mario Odyssey recently, except Daddy I've been are. playing it on and off for a while, <laughs> it dawned on me that the whole throwing the cap on something had taken it over just reminded me of Kid Chameleon. And it's such an over kind of, I don't know, like a, it's, it's a really good game. Kid, Kid Chameleon's a really tasty Mega Drive game and it gets hard as well. I remember the part where you turn into like a tank with a skull helmet and it's yeah. so difficult. But um, anyway, we went in there and the thing I'm playing with, I picked it for a quid in there, was an everybody's golf stress ball. I, I play I mean, golf, I love golf, golf games. I love golf. I love playing it and I love collecting the games and one day I'll do a really long six hour video love. on every golf game ever made mm. and my glasses will be firmly up my nose. But we so we went to the arcade, which we'll talk about in a bit. But also, we we just want to go through all the stuff we've picked up. And if you ever do go to Insane Games in Bridgewater, and I urge you to, they're not only really lovely, but everything you pick up in there, and they cover everything from pop vinyl, which we don't really have an interest in, pop vinyl to graphic novels, to there's some a, anime stuff I think, didn't they? Like um, loads of anime stuff. and DVDs. And at the back, they've got like a. It, it must have been about two or three hundred strategy they guides more for like fifty stuff pence than each. They used to have as well, didn't they? Sorry for, sorry for like talking over yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. Uh, no, um, like before, I don't remember seeing true. like that amount of like um, 
kind of like anime and that and then obviously in this one it's got like a lot more and modern stuff modern like stuff. ps4 and yeah yeah well modern worse is like ps2 but yeah, ps4 and they had a load of switch games down the front and it's always busy in there there's always like a nice atmosphere and really friendly it's just, it's such a good this such a good shop they're really friendly and they'll help you out in any way you can and so we just thought we'd go through a few of the things we picked up i'll put this down and then the new shop at the moment aren't they because um yeah they, they went from a little shop um, literally on the corner from Taiwan Arcade actually wasn't it and it was like a tiny little it was kind of we went there almost like a kind of like a block not blockbuster shop because it was no it was it was kind of blockbuster it was really a blockbuster yeah, it was not, the like, kind of set out one the, the sort of yeah that kind of spongy you know you go into blockbuster and it's all very kind of boxy they used to be like that and then a year ago they moved um, down towards it's difficult to explain Bridgewater but onto the sort of main strip near the fountain pub Near the Fountain Pub, which is absolutely fine, and they had, um, well, they had a record sale we missed, and they they just it's just right on the market opposite CEX, and they just sell great stuff. So we're going to go through some stuff we picked up. I don't want to put down that stress ball a little bit. Um, so this isn't. The, oh, I need my hands to pick up the gold. So this is in no particular order. The first thing we picked up was um, we managed to get hold of two. These were taped on two. Um, Sort of classic magazines, but they came with the original demo tape stuck on. We took them off to me because they were hanging by. A yeah, thread. they were hanging. They were literally just still stuck on, so we took those off. And they were they were six pounds, and they they gave them to us for five. Although we didn't have our free chewy bar. No, we didn't, we didn't have a free wham bar, which may have, may or not have been out of date. Who knows? Also, as well, apparently, when you look further into the magazine, that you get that wham bar. It's like you can you, get money off games if you send off wrappers for like five or ten wham bars. You get something like fifty p off Xenon two or something like on that the on the front page on. because this is like this is work. quite vital because it's very important. I was a bit upset. Look actually. at that artwork. That's all you need. That's the artwork you need. Emotion on the Amiga, very close to my heart indeed. We should do some magazine reviews. Okay, so it even comes with a free cut out one bar. You can probably cut out. See, ten pence, not ten p anymore. Spoiler alert for something later on in the video. By the way, look. Let's look. Um, mm, hashtag just saying but it's amazing that the some of the prices in these are absolutely unbelievable and there's so many just typos and mm. grammatical errors in them as well which obviously when you're a kid you just you don't care about I just saw Kevin Costner oh there he is I'm assuming that's the untouchables so yeah we picked who cares about the untouchables I mean I do you get the one bar wrappers and you save money on the game so you collect five and you save money on the game that's what How much about. money do you save in a game? I'm wondering if, like, I can see this by here. It's like a cutout one. Um, like, it says tear here. I wonder if that, might, like, equates to, like, one one bar and you have to get the rest of the four? Oh, uh, yeah, usually it was always it like that, wasn't be, it? must be, because... Was that say McEwan's? McCowan's. McCowan's. I thought you were just, like, saying um, four cans of McEwan's. Yeah, basically, please, Mr. Newsagent... I don't want to miss out on my free McCowan's Desperate Dan Chewy Bar and Games Tape. So, yeah, so if anyone wants them, in the description, we will pop in um, maybe a little copy of that. So, I mean, at your own leisure, we can... Yeah, we'll, we'll happily cut off the wham bar and send yeah. it to you so you can get another We don't need any wham bars where we go in, so... What really tickled me about this is that Crash used to be based in Ludlow, and we've been to Ludlow, and it's such a sleepy sort of Edwardian town. It just seems strange that such a seminal magazine would come from such a sort of um, sleepy place. But Wham Bars, they made that song, didn't they? No, that was George Michael. Wasn't Mike that hit as Andrew, well, like a Christmas? Andrew Ridgely. Last Christmas. Yeah, that was Wham with George Michael and Andrew Ridgely. Wham, the chewy bar, is made by a confectionery company. It's a, it's a, One of them is like a pop artist duo and the other one is like a confectionery company. Right. And they collaborate occasionally, do they? No, no, they're two separate things. They just happen to share the same sort of name wow it's rubbish isn't it it's what you make of it Faye really should we turn the camera off and have a chat no <laughs> so we're gonna go oh, do you wanna go first because yours is on the top okay so I picked up because I'm living like Sega anything Sega I wanna collect everything Sega as you can see yeah that's fine Um, I wish I was wearing my Sega backpack right now actually I don't know why I'm in the zone I should be wearing it on my Sega hoodie Um. The yeah, game gear is like something I'm mostly collecting, so I picked up this. Echo, good and nice system. Tides of Time, Echo Dolphin, and Chessmaster, which was like one pound, was one pound fifty, I think, one pound sixty. 
Yeah. And that was like, what, five or something? I mean, boxed, Sega, Game Gear games, and the fact... Christine as well. I, I'm kind of going through phase of collecting at the moment as well, so You're I mean, very much into your handheld, as the recent Tiger handheld video will attest. Yeah, but not only that, I mean... But it's also worth mentioning that the prices on these, um, you know, like... Um, oh, there we go, it was £1.60. Uh, £7 and £1.60. What, what Insane Games do is they go online and kind of work at a rough, say this, you know, like a game is like tenner. If they don't, they'll put it for like a pound or two below eBay prices. And then if they get something big in, like say a boxed Amiga 1200 with all the, all the accessories, if they they kind of send an email out to all of the subscribers and, you know, on Facebook and Twitter. And if no one buys it within two months, then they'll put it on eBay. Yeah, they'll so, the prices and stuff. So you well, basically just never get ripped off and you always get first dibs if you're a local or like a, you know, a fan of, of the, the sh it's It's the best games place I've ever been to. Yeah, and Echo Dolphin, I mean, I know we've got on quite a few different mediums, don't we? But um, I love Echo Dolphin, something. But I think it's because it's a nostalgic game for me. I played it as, as a child and my mum bought it from the video shop and I played it. And it's, I don't know, I quite like that game. I think it's quite creepy as well if you look back and... The little bit like kind of relaxing music. It's kind of quietly sinister, isn't it? About making the, <laughs> maybe not that kind of sound, but something equivalent. Um, <laughs> yeah, you don't know where you're going in that game is like as well like. It is quite, um, but there was it was weirdly kind of hypnotic. It was so quiet and sort of hypnotic with the music. That's a good way of describing it, hypnotic. Sorry, like they what it was, but yeah. Anyway, carry on. Moving on to the main event, ultimate golf. On the Amiga. That was my gift to you, actually, wasn't it? You did pick the Gremlin Graphics, 1991. I'm one day going to go through a phase of playing every golf game that we have, because we must have about 40 or 50. On all. And I hope other golfers out there feel free to comment, but to me, the new on the PS4 Golf Club, and I know they've got the PJ license now for 2019, for me, PJ Golf Tour 2, just before it went to like fully digitised graphics on three and euro and stuff in 96. PGA Golf 2 on the Mega Drive 1992 is the pinnacle of golf games apart from, and in the arcade then, you've got Golden T97 and uh, Neo Geo Turf Masters. If I was locked in a room with those four games, I'd be, I'd be dead within days. I'd but... only come into that room if they brought in actual golf. <laughs> yeah, so you could you Pete Alice going, oh, he's, he's sitting in the rough. <laughs> Because he laughs like Robert Duval. Yeah, and he always makes those weird, like, stupid comments, isn't he? Yeah, he's, you hit it and he goes, oh, oh. You're like, stop, <laughs> stop, stop teasing me, Peter. You're being paid yeah. to try and encourage me. Right, after a golf one, two, and three, we've so got... I'll try and do a lot play. of these pretty quickly because there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of... My brother, about three or four months ago, kindly gave us his Xbox 360. And the Xbox 360 pretty much totally passed me by. I had Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 on it. And then the red rings of death, boom. So I went, I changed to PS3. But my brother gave us his updated 360, which has served us well. So I've gone through a bit of a phase of just, because they're so cheap now, just picking up all the gold. So I, I'll, just, I'll just go through these really quickly. Um, I'm looking which ones I, I would have probably picked up. Like I would have picked up these two, these three. If there's any feeble, I would have been better. No. Yeah. So why don't you go first? Well, these are what you've picked up. Yeah, so I just picked up a log. Because I, I, I was all about the Game Gear, and I picked up um, the Golf Room, some mag Crash Magazines, something else. And um, I swear I picked up a couple of other things, but I think I fell my way somewhere. And There'll have to be an addendum to this video where you comment on the things you've picked up. Yeah, you, know? you can't remember, and I kind of filed them all the way. So. Um, this is what you've picked up, which was something I probably would have as well, so until... That was, a the room. that was a charity shop pickup. It's just Silent Hill. Yeah. I played one and two, and then I just completely drifted off from it. And my brother, uh, Casey, it was said, like a quid as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like a quid. And he said, no, that's his favourite Silent Hill. So I just pristine. So it'd be a horror night. You know, we're coming up to October in a few months. That'll be happening. We'll be sitting there and smashing through that. A room full of nightmares. Just an appearance one. This is one I would have picked up because Hitman... It's the ultimate stealth triple pack. We've never played Thief, but you like Thief. You've seen me play one of the previous ones. Hitman's yeah, always Thief. good. Hitman Absolution's okay. Deus Ex Human Revolution is one. I must have played through that game four or five times. Um, uh, what was it called? Humankind Divided or whatever it's called. I did, did, didn't do it for I me. I didn't play that. Th that. That is good, though. And this is another one that I've heard of a lot. 
Oh, am I boring you? Yeah, you are, bitch. That's how boring Mankind Kinda. Divided is. Um, so this is Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon. Big fan of co-op, local co-op games. And this is a game I know that I'll play through with my friend Chris, old Samuel, massive. But um, I know this will be good. I've seen this on the Vita and didn't pick it up. So, but this is this was like three pounds, three fifty. And, and again, because we bought so much stuff, he knocked, he knocked like five or ten pounds off. It was amazing. So I'm going to play Earth Defense Force and uh, hopefully it's really cool. I've heard good things about it, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, um, one which I think we've had before now on the PS3 uh, is a game called You Star in the Movies. Oh, we've had so much fun with those. I know they're bad, but they are fun when you've got a group of And this one is You you're in the movies. Look how cheap that case is. Everything about it, everything about it, it's just it's a launch title through and through. But you saw, I, I had bad ratings, I think, I remember. Because it's just a bad game. We've I got three that. copies of it because it just keeps breaking. You've got to breaking. look at it as a party game. Yeah. And like reflect on that way. It's kind and of you just like, look at the video clips. You all stand back drunk. and like, oh my God, you all drunk last weekend. Look at the video. This it's is so funny. Yeah, it's such bad green screen. Or even not drunk, whatever, you know, whatever situation you're in. But They threw in as well. They said that we've got the connect over there, but they said you need the specific base basic like xbox 360 camera and they threw it in with it for a quid so you know get a few people around have a few drinks that's it's going to win us money back in seconds yeah um and then the other ones i'll go through these quickly is ninja gaiden 2 which i think is called ninja S sigma or something on the ps3 i think i've already got it but i wasn't sure and i will play through this because it just looks really cool team ninja you that can't go wrong cool. with ninja okay yeah. i've doubled up ninja gaiden oh no um, oh dear can go zero because Bushido Blade is one of my favourite games on the PS1 and I know this is kind of the sort of spiritual successor but <laughs> I pray for Bushido Blade 2 and I don't know what this I know nothing about this game but if it doesn't live up to the original title then I'll go back to Bushido Blade I've got no problem with that there's, um, there's two here that I, I tend to collect steel boxes so Bioshock which is a game that means a lot to me. 2007 was a rough year for me, but this was an awesome, awesome game that got me through a rough couple of weeks. So I'm gonna, she's clearly looking for something she bought. Um, <laughs> you know, Rapture is gonna be good to me and I'm gonna play through that again when I've got a day off work and just coast through it. Because eight hours and you're done. It's a really, really tasty narrative driven game. And Lost Planet because I, Lost Planet 2 was really good fun co-op, just a huge you know sequence of boss battles, which was fine. And Lost Planet 3 is probably the best in this series, but I missed the first one. And this was like, here we go, one pound for a steel box. Of course I'm going to pick it up. I'm not, I'm not cockeyed. So that's fine. And then MMA, because I just find them fun, because I, I always think, I like wrestling, I like mixed martial arts. I put the game on, I don't understand the controls, and I turn it off. But this was one of those games where we put it on after a few glasses of wine, it was too complex and we turned it off. Maybe one day I'll... Fine. Yeah, it was quite, like, full-on, wasn't it? Yeah. One day I'll know what's happening. And then this, which I've never heard of before, but my brother suggested it, and I picked it up for pound fifty. So if you know anything about this, let me know. I've got a few of these kind of seemingly epic RPGs. Um, 99 Nights, one called The Last. Some, there's about three or four of them, because, of course, it's very Japanese-related, so yeah. there's just a lot of full-on Japanese RPGs, and I'm assuming this will be good fun. This was very special because when we walked in, as Faye said, they've started stocking um, more recent sort of games like the PS4, the Xbox One and so on. On the Switch. And they had a big sticker on this game on the Switch that said, import £18. He gave it to me for like 16 Thank you. And he said, it's it's an American import, but or Japanese import that plays with English subtitles. Um, I picked it up and it's just it's just the PAL game. It works absolutely fine. It's one awesome of, game as well. One of the best games we've played in the last few months. And it's Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap. And this game, recently I've played, reviewed rather for Games Freezer and Nerdly, um, both Flashback, uh, Degeneration, of which I was a massive fan of the Amiga, and Another World. And this game puts to shame those shoddy remakes. Yeah. Because this, in this the game, fa the fact you can flick flick between the old school retro game because it's essentially the same game. It is the yeah, same it, game. The gameplay is so good. And and the enemy placement is the well. same. And, and you, when you flick back, it's you, 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 you walk into every screen, and every time the music changes, the art style changes. You flick back between the music and the art style, two separate buttons, and just have a few seconds to listen to that glorious old sort of 
8-bit bleepy bloopy music and then flick back to the modern era and it, it, it just adds such a layer to the game doesn't it and the enemy placement is the same the uh, everything, is, everything the is the same apart from and it, and it just it's such proof of how well the game was designed and I absolutely love this it's lovely yeah this was and just the drawings and it's gorgeous isn't it? well just it was like we had Sonic Mania Plus and you play the game and you think this is just what needs to happen yeah this is this is perfect so this was 10 out of 10 yeah that's a solid solid game and then Faye picked up something I think you paid 400 pounds was it Four hundred and ninety pounds. Four hundred and ninety pounds no, in old money as well. It was two pounds fifty in a charity shop, so I did go towards oh. um a charity, so that's fine. I mean well it's all good. But um yeah, so I remember years ago I had um Dance Stage Euromix on the PS one and the dance mat that I had as a Christmas present for both the parents and oh. I loved that game. That's and fun. I spent hours and hours and hours in my bedroom. Dancing. Dancing. That game proved myself. I think I was on quite like a high mode. I wasn't quite on the crazy mode. Um, but it was on like quite a high level. It wasn't like a beginner then. And um, which gave you, if you went on the high mode, you'd get access to um, like a lot of the complicated songs. They all often like dance, weird dance tunes or ones made by Sony. Yeah. Like... Uh, it, like other ones and the basic ones would be like um, Bucho Man Busway, um, the Boogles, um, Buggles. Buggles, Boogles to me, <laughs> the Boogles, Video Killed the Radio Star, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And it was just, I, I was addicted to that game. I hours and hours sweating in my room playing that as a teenager. So, uh, we went to Bridgewater a year ago as well. Mm. And we went to Bridgewater, um, the Tumble Barcade. Um, we met a guy, didn't we? Called Dance Matt. Mm -hmm. He didn't care that man. When I met, I met Dance Matt. Will let me just quickly check how much we've filmed because I don't want my phone to stop film. Yeah, we're fine. Last time we there went there, last time we went, no, because there's obviously this okay. camera go. Um, we went to Bridgewater about a year ago, and there was a guy there called Dance Matt, and he rocked up. He just a dude like in his like late thirties, early forties. And he started dancing, and he was good. And I was kind of watching him, thinking... He was very the good, he was amazing. Well, he was warming up, and I thought, this is a guy who knows what he's doing, this is some serious stuff. He excelled in that game, didn't he? Like, he but, was... No, but then, he did a couple of warm-up songs, and I was chatting yeah, with him, so, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then, I was having... There's a toilet, and I was having a pee, and he came out of the cubicle, and he had changed. He had a sweatband on, <laughs> he had, like, like a proper, like, sort of um, gym top, cycling shorts, changed his trainers, he was hips deep. And he got on the dance machine and he kicked ass. And he did not stop dancing for like three hours. He had like a two litre bottle of water and he was... I've only ever seen someone that good at a game when they're Japanese. When they, you know when they're hips deep and that's what they do day in, day out. And you think, yeah, that's it. You know, the kind of people, you, the kind of 12 roads you see to run in headshots in games. Dance Map was... He was he, designed for that machine. He did it so well that, okay, so there's a two-player dance machine. He was over the two-player dance machine. He was doing both players at once. Because you can on the, the crazy... And if you go to gamesfreezer.com and, ga and Google Games Freezer Dance Mat, you'll see the video uploaded. Mm. <laughs> Amazing. Um, also as well, they've got these bars behind you. And I always thought, like, I wonder what those bars are for. No, no, you would you do it to help you. He was like leaning like on, like the bars that are there to stop you falling right. off. He was holding on to them just so he could move his feet even faster. He didn't, he didn't care. He's amazing. Sadly, when we went back this time, we didn't see him. We didn't see Dance Matt. We miss you, Dance Matt. I think I'd forgotten about the whole Dance Matt situation because, like, in general, Dance Matt, not Dance Matt. Yeah, um, yeah. Because I grew up loving it anyway, so I've always wanted to buy it back because I think about six years ago, I got rid of mine because. When the collections didn't seem to be working, we were in a flat and we were just yeah, like, you know, need more rooms, I've work, been there. It, and like, yeah. now I wouldn't dream of doing that, I should have held on to it, but I think we were really always the case, sure isn't it? Always the case. So we bought, um, or I bought, um, uh, the PS1 Jungle Beats, or Jungle Groove I'm uh, dance map with Jungle Groove and the PS1, didn't we? But the mat was faulty. One of the buttons didn't quite work yeah, and it ruined it. Sad. But although cool, you know, we've got a box and stuff, and the actual Jungle Beats game is kind of cool, and whatever. But anyway, lead up to hardly anything, because I mean, <laughs> I love the it's all led up to this. And all this, like, epic over. talk of these 
kingdoms. So anyway, there. I bought this for two fifty basically, and it's called the Dance Master. And it's a three games in one dance game, oh, pinball game, and a knockout so game, bad. featuring independent woman Beyonce. This is where I picked up. Although at the time I was kind of like I picked it up. Hey, don't let, no, hold that for longer so I can really really absorb it in. Um, I was getting it wasn't like a, an official PS One one or whatever. But this is like a, just a game you plug into your TV, isn't it? Oh come on, Phil. What do you mean not official? You can sing, Jingle Bell. Independent woman, Beyonce. That's not going to be Beyonce. Okay. Take on me, aha. It's going to be bad. Reach no, out. not independent woman or independent woman part one. Yeah. So, I I guarantee you, know it you says, it's not going to be Beyonce. Hey. I'm trying to miss you. Okay, take it. Jingle Bell, Merry Christmas. Jingle Bell. Africa, take on me. I need to know. Oh, Reach so out and touch me. Is that it again? Only you. Independent Woman Part 1. I'm sorry, but don't say... <laughs> we'll try it out soon. It better be. But going back to Bridgewater... What what's amazing about the art? Well, like that, this is all from um, uh, charity shops and mostly from insane games. But when you go to um, the Time Warp Arcade, it's six pounds fifty to get in, and you that's for adults and children. You go in there and fair play. For the instruction. It's gonna be so bad. There we go. It's almost like no one's ever played it because it's crap. Um, hey. So jealous. yeah, we go oh, jealous. Why do you get so um, jealous? Jealous, yes. Um, so we went into um, time warp arcade. Time warp arcade. We went there with my parents, and my brother, and it was amazing, wasn't it? You go in there, and there's about six or seventy machines. They've got a little uh, room at the back, sort of space at the back, where there's about fifteen, twenty machines always being worked on or fixed. And what's really nice about it, they've always got stickers on them explaining what's wrong with them and why yeah. they'll be working. So it's constantly in rotation and you've got stuff like so many from different eras like really cool uh, prop cycles in there Gallagher Gallagher which you you had a nice high score 29,000 on Virtual uh, Tennis Virtual Tennis which you love that's one of your favourite games Virtual mm -hmm. Cop 2 which is one of my favourite games um, Time Crisis there's, alien, there's an alien gun game in there which is really meaty Time Crisis is in there a really cool Star Wars cab a really nice 80s the ca I forget what it's Ford called now, kind of they, one, is it? no no it's, it's, it's sort of um Oh, wireframe Vectrex kind of one, yeah. which is, it's a small cab. I mean, I'm only like five foot ten, but I was in there and I felt like a little kid. You did look a giant. <laughs> but when you start playing it, and someone had been in there eating sour cream Pringles, and I could smell it on my hands afterwards. There was Pringles everywhere, all over the controls, and then there was a kid with a Star Wars T-shirt on that I nearly beat up because I was walking around like smelling my fingers, thinking. You didn't really beat him up. I didn't. I could have. I could have. <laughs> little kid. Um, you just jealous of the Pringles. Yeah. I don't like sour cream Pringles, probably because of that. But it's really nice wireframe graphics, and it's just, it, it's really cool. I'm not a Star Wars fan, but it's... It was good, like, beginning it was, things, yeah. yeah. And, and the way that it's, like, a three or four minute level, but each time you sort of level up, it just gets more and more difficult with more stuff thrown at you. And I, I really like that. It reminded me of Smurfs on the Atari 2600. Yeah. Where it's, like, a simple level, of, and every time yeah. it's just slightly harder, really clever, really nice use of, um, sort of, limitations of the system. And then there was, um, they've got the original Splatterhouse in there. They've got multiple versions of, my mum, basically, we got to the end of Double Dragon and ran out of credits. It's all free play, but um, we ran out of credits to the end. And you then, ask her, the bar, well, I said bar, reception. Yeah, on some machines, it's, you know, they go in and in the morning, they'll put 99 credits on. And when that runs out, they'll just open it up and put it back up to 99. Me and my mum were there when it happened to be on the last 10. So we got to the last boss and failed. My mother was loving it. She was shrieking. Um, but then you ended up on this weird odyssey with my mum of just playing, like one-on-one -on -one fighters. You played Tekken. You yeah. Were Dasher final fight Street about Fighter three. Two. Yeah, there's about three or four different Street Fighter. Which was nice. I love a good uh, beat. You know. It was yeah. just weird to see mum playing those games. My dad did not move off Golden T. I think it's Peter Jacobson's Golden T ninety seven with a kind of roller trackball. <sighs> if I could buy an arcade game, it would be that game. See, I would get Virtual Tennis. And yeah. I would get Galaga. Really? We've got mm -hmm. Gallagher on the cocktail machine. Yeah, it's not the machine, is it? The original. No, it's not the original machine, that's exactly right. I don't know if they're and that's another it. thing. There's a place in Cardiff called Kong's, which is cool, you go in it, but it's like the main machine's just a pound ago, and it's kind of fun, but when you go in somewhere you pay £6.50 and they're all original machines, really well maintained, there's just a crazy taxis there as yeah. well. Yeah. Just, there's just a real charm about playing them, and people 
really appreciate them. And there's like a little corner where you can play. There was like two different versions of Mario Kart. There was, I think Zelda Wind Waker yeah. was there, and a couple of other things in the corner. You just go in there; it's just a good atmosphere. Pool tables and a hockey at the back. And if you live in Bridgewater, which I wish I did, you pay twenty quid a month, and you just get free access every day. Yeah. Well, not free access, but you know what I mean. It's like. It was absolutely lovely. You should pay a visit. Yeah. Definitely. So that's all I had to say, really. Bridgewater's amazing. It's my favourite town in England. It's because it's got a massive arcade. <laughs> it's because it's got a massive arcade. It's absolutely fine. Almost the next one now. Like, well, yeah. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed the video. We just wanted to chat about Bridgewater for a little bit because it's one of those... It's almost like a second town. You've got Taunton. No one ever says, have you been to Bridgewater? And, you know, you have these up the four quarters in London and you've got Kongs in Bristol. Which we haven't Cardiff. gone to yet in Peckham. We haven't gone in Peckham. We haven't gone there. But there's a real familial home charm to Bridgewater where it's just this amazing little gaming mecca just plonked in the middle of sort of rural England and it's amazing and they're just completely respectful of uh, the history of machines and you can have a conversation with a guy behind the counter or, you know and yeah. they just they love it Bridgewater is a good place to go and it's easy to get to it's pretty central so yeah it was awesome that's it really so yeah, let us know in the comments any, any games you want to talk about. We haven't played them yet. We've had a busy couple of weeks, but um. That's and it. now we've got to clearly go play this. I can't wait. See you soon. Bye.